Hello there. Welcome to another Synthium live hack. I feel obliged to say this. Coming at you on a Friday night. I feel like that's going to be my new thing. Welcome to another. Well, let me uh, mute myself over here. Hey guys, welcome. Welcome, Nomad and and Robo Rad. Yes, I did say six foot. So, if you look behind me. Um, yeah, it's over on the other camera that I set up. You'll see that there is a piece on the floor. And it looks like a JD body. Well, it is a JD body. And no, this is not um, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. It, everything hasn't shrunk down. It is just a very large body. And let me show you that. This is the scale that we're working with. It's uh, pretty ridiculous how big this is going to be. So, think if my head is here, it's going to be probably like six times my head size because JD has a big head. And this is his body. And these are the servo. Several them brackets for his arms. So if you're not familiar with what, with what a JD looks like, I'll grab one here. Now, you know, I'll have to take a couple of servos off this one because I plucked too many on it. Okay, this is the JD Humanoid Robot from Easy Robot. This is the, his usual size. Uh, quite a bit smaller than this this body that we have here. Now we'll pull this back for user viewability. So this is JD, and we're going to be making this robot six feet tall. It's going to be nuts. <laughs> So, join me on this journey where we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna enlarge all the servos. I've got a design prepped already. I'll be modifying it tonight. We'll be using Tinkercad to modify that. That's uh, that, my other window there. So, let me just sign into that for a quick second. Yes, this is going to be a large and in charge robot. The biggest I've ever built. By far. Alright, I'll show you a few designs on here. Might switch views if, uh, if it's too small in that window. So I, I actually took... Hey Bruce, thanks for joining us. Um... I took some of the designs from the InMove and adapted them. So some of these here, I'll just switch views here for a quick second so you guys can see it better. And this, you can see the brackets here in my other view. <laughs> All right. So we're going to, I used the, what they call the PIV gear, and that comes from the JD shoulder, or sorry, not JD, um, in move shoulder bracket. So, this is what I did. This servo is not a servo that nor people normally use. It's a it's a digital servo from um, from a company that uh, Easy Robot works with, and it uh, is one of the highest torque digital servos that I, for its size that I know of. It's actually probably one of the top four on the, in the servo market. It's uh, 40 kilogram centimeters, so it's it's about twice as torquey as maybe even a little bit more than twice as torquey as the regular HDD servos from AZ Robot. Pretty intense, and um, you see here uh, on the back side, I did a modification. 
I took the potentiometer out of the servo and elongated the wires to go to the servo electronics and then I went up here and mounted it up here and it interfaces with the PIV gear this guy, the green guy right there and so the potentiometer lets you know what position you're in with this um, uh, with the servo motor so that this PIV gear only turns 90 degrees it actually has a worm gear inside that looks like so and it interfaces with the PIV gear here. I'll, I'll enlarge that for you guys. Hopefully the preview comes up. There we go. So it interfaces with that. And it is pretty strong. And this actually turns multiple times uh, for every rotation that this makes. And uh, that can happen because we have the potentiometer outside of the servo. And uh, it's super strong. It is like DJ tried with all of his might to try to break this setup. And he couldn't. It was it's pretty amazing. It's a great, great design by um, Gail Levine. Um, yeah, like... I can't uh, say more about it, but yeah, that's awesome design. And so we're going to use this design to, uh, yeah, to make these foam pieces move around and make this six foot tall JD robot. So it's going to be used for, this JD robot is going to be used for trade shows and just all in all shenanigans, I think, from Easy Robot. Uh, they just wanted to get a whole bunch of attention, so that's you'll have to be on the lookout for it in um, in the new year. Hopefully, there'll be some blogs posting about it and that kind of thing. But it's going to be <laughs> quite big. Yeah, I definitely agree, Roborad. That definitely worm gears are great. I like them as well. And yeah, so tonight we'll be adjusting some 3D designs, 3D printing some stuff. Um, one hard challenge that I've been facing is how do you mount stuff to styrofoam? And I've thought of a few different methods. I can throw some up on screen here so you guys can see. So I didn't know what these were called until today. So they're a T-nut is these guys. So, a T-nut is used usually to uh, go into uh, into wood. You hammer it in, and then it gives you some threads to thread into. In our case, I thought, hey, you know, that might work. Uh, we put it, we'll just hammer it into the foam. But, really, it doesn't really have a good way of staying in the foam. You'd have to use some JB Weld or something like a silicone to, to hold it in and even then it would not be that great so I was back to the drawing board I thought you know because originally I thought maybe we just use a large um, like a large thread forming screw something like this these these aren't really thread forming. These are this is more of a uh, a machine screw. This is what they these are called. Thread forming has these these little grooves in it. So yeah, it was, and even this would be okay too. So DJ was actually telling me about these guys, where you kind of drill or sorry, like screw one side into the foam. With the with the the coarse threads, and then from the other side you just attach an, you know your object, and then a nut on the end of that. And I didn't really know where I could find those kind of things, but I kept on looking, and I found a different idea. So everyone knows about the drywall anchors, right? Yeah, just to answer your question there, Roborad, Astro Boy is just just on hold. Not uh, 
I'm not giving up on him. There's definitely going to be a whole lot of live hacks on on Astro Boy, but I'm I uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, I, I probably won't do it like consecutively with Astro Boy because it's going to be such a long-term project. I'm guessing I'm only a quarter away through, which yeah feels like it's going to be a, a long one. Probably even rival the Rock'em Sock'em Robots. I'm guessing. But um, anyways, with so with with JD here, with the big JD and the styrofoam blocks that we have to mount our servos onto, I thought, hey, you know what? What about drywall anchors? So that's these guys. But they just have like very small threads. I didn't feel like it would. Uh, I, I like the design of that style because I know it it stays into drywall, so it'd likely stay into foam, okay. But um, yeah, just a little bit too small. So I went to my new favorite website, Thingiverse. Well. I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but I, I do like it now, because now that I've been posting to it. So I went to Thingiverse and searched Styrofoam Anchor. And it helps if you... Styrofoam. I think it helps if you spell it right. There we go. And lo and behold, there's three designs. So I actually grabbed this one. I printed it at 125% to fit with the screws that I had on hand. Which are these guys. Eight by two and a half inch construction screws. We have a big 350 uh, piece kit of it, so figured uh, those would be great to use. And they also are long enough to go through. Whoa, I'm hitting a lot of things here. To go through this design, actually, it would go through the other way and into an anchor of some sort. So. I just need to adjust those holes there and print out a bunch of these and I figured uh, I found that 125% um, ratio of the size uh, worked out well so you just I just grew it by a little bit and it uh, fit these these screws that we had on hand so handy So Bruce is saying, foam itself will never hold for very long. Two plates of Baltic birch plywood with spacers. Yeah, it's, it's not a bad idea. We thought of also doing 3D printed plates and um, kind of gluing them on. And we also thought of a couple other things like running a tube within the, the foam to kind of do a, a a hard attachment so yeah uh, I'm gonna do some testing this is my uh, my first attempt which is using these these anchors and we'll see how it goes I th I think it uh, I think it's gonna work out I'm let's say 50% certain but yeah, I'll take your advice into account there, Bruce. Um, if this doesn't work, we're moving on to a different design. So, uh, For those of you just joining us, um, what you see in the background now is the JD body, uh, which is quite large. I'll give you some perspective. <laughs> be, <laughs> be right back for a second. how big the JD is going to be. Just as taller than I am, 
then a very large body, very thick. <laughs> and then we have the servo pieces right here. This is going to be a bit of a challenge to use these guys. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to uh, to use these with the movement, but uh, we'll see. I may have to reinforce these guys because it's uh, just so just so flimsy and flexible in order to uh, make the, the servos actually move. I'm going to be putting a servo on each side. And each servo is going to have the, the pit gear set up with the worm gear, the in-move worm gear, um, 3D printed pieces in it. We'll, uh, like I just had two servos, one on each side. We need to cut out a section to put the servo in on each and, um, and secure them. And I'm thinking that I'm just gonna secure them with the, the styrofoam anchors and we'll see how that goes. Just a test tonight. These aren't the real pieces, actually. The real pieces look much better. Um, these pieces are the prototype pieces that they gave us ahead of time to, to do some measurements with before the final product is created. So, let's get into it. Tonight's uh, music playlist is copyright free music. Hopefully this time they don't play anything by Drake on here uh, because that really messed up my last video. <laughs> it took me all weekend, plus I think a few hours on Monday to, to get it all figured out. Uh, this one is, I think they call it the NCS playlist. Uh, YouTube also has it, so it's a big, uh, pretty common copyright free playlist if you're, if you're wondering about it. Okay, so let's put some of this stuff to the side. Oh, while I'm here, I'll show you uh, a little thing that I also created this week. This little guy. Oh, all right, so it's two pieces. And any guesses to, uh, to what it's for? Put your best guess in the chat. But I'm going to, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll leave that for a little while. I'll leave, I'll leave it for a little while so you guys can guess. <laughs> and then we'll come back to it in a little bit. Okay, so, I don't think we're gonna have to worry about the PIV gear just yet. I think we're gonna go and uh, work on, yes, the shoulder. We're gonna work on this piece. Okay, what we want to do is make the holes in it much smaller. So these holes I made for a large bolt to go through and go into the styrofoam. But now instead we're going to be using the number eight, two and a half inch wood screws. And we'll see how that goes. So I think I made a number of changes, so yeah, here we go. So let's get our good old calipers out. I guess I can switch the view so you guys can see this a little better. There we go. <laughs> Gummy bears. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I didn't actually cut the foam. Um, Easy Robot hired a professional company uh, to to design and and cut this foam. And they did it with, a, I think they had a hot wire CNC machine. So they actually, you know, just plug in the dimensions, set everything up, and then the machine has like a melting wire that goes through the foam and cuts it up. And it's a really clean cut. Uh, I was pretty blown away. And the, the final pieces are even better. It actually looks like, it's like going to be almost very to scale to a JD. Okay, so let me grab my calipers and I'll be right back.
So we want the whole size to, oh, so, sorry guys, to be a little bit bigger than that four millimeters looks like. So we want the threads to be able to pass through the, that, uh, what did I call this? Just the left shoulder piece, I guess. Uh, so we're gonna have to go probably like 4.5. I still haven't figured out um, how much the 3D printing puts out, like puts, uh, I don't know how you, squishes, I guess you could, is a better term for it. And how much the 3D printing actually squishes and turns into a real life dimension. So this is 4.15. Every time I uh, design something and I go, you know, and, oh yeah, 4.15, I'll just go to 4.2 and it'll be fine. Usually the squish it actually makes that hole a lot smaller. So I think we're going to go up to likely 4.8, let's say. I think the squish is about 0.3 millimeters. I haven't measured it all yet. Never, haven't had a chance really. But uh, we're gonna put our faith in 4.8. And what we also do is grab the piece that interfaces with this and we'll put it on top and then we'll see where our holes should line up. So let me do that for a quick second. So this live hack is going to be a bit of design, a bit of 3D printing, and a bit of uh, cutting the styrofoam with my lots of measuring, I guess, and measuring twice and cutting once, hopefully. <laughs> um, I'll be cutting with just a regular X-Acto knife. So no, no good, no close guesses yet for that uh, that piece that I held up. Any 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 more guesses? Um, I just gave it away, so <laughs> I uh, I had it on screen actually because I I was designing it before. It's in this uh, it's in my gallery list. So if you guys were quick enough to catch that, you would have known what it is. All right. This is the piece I want to tinker. And we also need, we are gonna remove some of these spikes that I put on this piece. They don't need to be there. Oh yeah, <laughs> watch out for Jason tonight. Friday the 13th. All right, so yeah, those are the, the last pieces I put on there. Remove those. Select all, combine again. Excuse me. Copy that, and then we'll go back to our <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's a good idea using a, uh, a reaming tool or a drill bit to make the holes accurate. You know what, I'd, I'd just rather like get it done in 3D design, make it perfect there, and then never have to uh, worry about doing that, using an extra tool. Just save myself a little bit of time, especially because I'm gonna be printing out likely 10 of these, like 10 sets of these, so it's gonna be quite a, quite a bit. And I don't wanna be doing a whole bunch of uh, laborious labor work. So, all right, I'll, I'll let you guys in on that little design that I had. So again, this is what it looks like. The two pieces together. This piece here is what the device, let's say, goes into. And then this piece on top clips it in. I'm using PLA plastic. So, here it is. It's a servo 
extension locking mechanism or connector. So I'll show you how that works. Pop this off. So with these servos, servo extensions, they never hurt. They never hold the servo wire quite, quite perfectly. They always seem to pop off quite often. So I thought, hey, why not? Let's make something that this sits into and doesn't doesn't separate. And then obviously it could slide out. It could pop off this way. So I figured. Let's put a locking clip on top. There we go. It's not going anywhere now. Can't separate those that extension from that servo cable. So uh, I designed that for Easy Robot. I'm not too sure if they're going to want that open sourced or not, but I'd like to open source that design. Uh, we'll see what they say after this project is done. Okay, let's get back to this. So we made these 4.8, I believe. Yep, so rather than me, oh yeah, I forgot we have a, we have a part that we're waiting to paste in. There we go. So bring that up, Put, push it on top. So we can't really align these perfectly um, with the with the alignment tool because this thing has a weird center point because of its odd shape so we'll bring it down and see how close it is seems like it needs to shift this way a little more so let's uh, change our snap grid so we can finally adjust it. Okay, so I think if we zoom in a little, we might be able to make this happen a little better. Bring this down until... Seems like, I guess, we could uh, there, meet it up right down here is where I met it up. So, bring that up like, there we go. So inside this um, cavity here is where the, the piv gear spins. And this is where the worm gear is inside of this cavity here. Oh, sounds like our music is is dying here. Okay, and it's back. So what we need to be careful of is where these holes are at. See, kind of, I made a mistake and this hole was kind of running into this piece. So we'll change that up a little bit. Uh, what we can do is just copy and paste this guy four times. Delete these. Actually, I can just do this. Since I have two, let's just copy and paste two of them. Bring them into this section here. And delete these other ones here. Yeah, that design that I made uh, for, for locking the servos together is a pretty simple one. Uh, if you guys ever wanted to make one for yourself, it doesn't take too long. But yeah, it's for this project, it's going to be imperative that the servos don't get disconnected at any point. So I wanted to make sure that didn't happen. So I'm going to try to get it into this little corner here. We also want um, these holes not to be directly 
anywhere close to the the sides. Well, I guess they wouldn't be anyway, I guess. Um, just because we don't want to be close to the edges of the foam because the edges of the foam are a little bit weaker than more closer to the center. So especially these two here. Because I think that will be at um, the edge of the foam. So I want to push those in as, as far as we can. I'll, uh, I think I'll try to line these up too. Oops. Select both of those, get our alignment tool, and we'll align them to this, to this one. Same thing over here. Oops. Center. I don't know if that, if that aligned right or not, but I'll have a quick look. Looks like it did. So one thing I forgot to think about is that the head of the screw is going to be a little larger and it will run into this piece here. But what I'm going to do is going to do this, I'm going to do something just like these guys, uh, sorry, just like Gail did and countersink the screw head. So we'll make these holes and then I'll make some countersink points as well. Um, at the same time, let's... Uh, Align these guys. Same thing down here. Okay, let's uh, control A, combine everything. There we go. And then to make a countersink hole, we'll use the cone tool, flip it over on its head, 180 degrees. So the the foam manufacturer or contractor, I should say, um, they're actually going to put a layer of coating and a layer of paint on top of the coating uh, for strength. And I don't know what material they're using. It might be like an epoxy, but that's what they're going to do to strengthen it up. And that's what I feel like will uh, will likely help out the design that I'm thinking about, where we'll have the, the 3D printed anchors underneath that coating and have you know a screw sticking out just in, so it doesn't get filled in. And then we'll remove all the screws and then the, the, the anchor should be locked in the coating and not move. Uh, one thing I should have done actually is not combine everything so I can actually center this cone doesn't have to be this tall actually I'll do that oh man <laughs> so you can change your radius pretty quick uh, I'd like this to be a bit smaller let's go 10 10 You know what, we could um, just measure the head of the screw. It's eight. So with a little wiggle room, let's say 
8.5. Yeah, let's just go like 8.5. And then we will shrink this down. I wonder if that adjusts. Okay, no, that's good. So I'm gonna take this apart. I'm gonna go Control A, select everything, except for this and our four holes. Combine that. This should make it easier to, to work with. Oh yeah, I don't want to combine that. Whoops. This this piece. Don't want to combine that. Uh, we can actually get rid of it now that we have our positions for our screws. Yeah, let's just delete it. Okay, good. They're not too close to the worm gear section. That's fine. Looks good to me. So let's control A again, and then I'm shift, ugh, shift and clicking these four pillars, or holes, as well as this guy, and then we'll combine. Okay, so now I want to make four of these, copy and paste four of them. I'll take this one, and we will align them. So with when you're designing with uh, Tinkercad, that's the one the one thing that you need to do all the time is use the alignment tool to make sure that hmm, I wonder if I should make that a little shallower. You know what? I think that'll be fine. We'll see how it cuts. Oh uh, yeah, so what it's saying is that you need to, instead of like in in uh, programs like SolidWorks being able to lock any two pieces together, I forget what they call that, but uh, and to a certain dimension, um, which makes it pretty easy to uh, have relationships between parts. Tinkercad isn't like that, and it's very difficult to do everything by dimensions. It's more, it's a rougher tool, I guess you could say, and it uh, definitely relies on you aligning things more than it does uh, getting them to the specific dimension. I link TickerCAD that uh, in the the fact that you can make things very quickly. I don't like it in that you, it's not very mathematically precise. You can't even draw a line from like one spot here to one spot here. If you can, please let me know, but it's, yeah, it's near impossible. Whereas that's the thing you can do with uh, SolidWorks, you can customize everything. So we're gonna, let's drop those down. There we go. So control A and let's combine everything. You know what, I think that's a pretty good depth for uh, for countersink. I think it looks pretty good. So we can probably just uh, set this part to print on the 30, 3D printers. It'll likely take four or five hours likely for this piece. I guess it depends if I want to uh, print it with a thick infill. I think likely I will. Um, it, I could print it faster if I did a, like a smaller percentage of infill, um, but the trade-off is that uh, if it works, then I can actually use it in, in the, this production of this uh, robot. But if it doesn't, you know, that's, you know, I've only, I only would have saved like an hour or so probably doing a thick infill versus a thin infill. So if it's going to take four 
hours to print, and then I thicken up the infill and it takes five hours. So be it. I'd rather not uh, mess around, save myself the four hours instead of, you know, and only lose an hour if I'm if I'm wrong, if it doesn't work. All right, there's that piece. Now, let's move on to the foam. Should we look at the foam? Oh yeah, there's one thing I wanted to do actually with this piece uh, before we uh, before we go. Let me copy this and make a new design. I should ask you guys, like, um, what are you guys all using for uh, CAD CAD software for three printing and stuff? Do you guys use Tinkercad, or are you guys using um, heavier duty tools, Fusion 360, SolidWorks? I'm trying to think of the other. There's a few other ones out there, but a three 3D Studio Max, Blender, those ones. I think they do the same thing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a large box over everything. Make this thing pretty huge. And I'm going to raise it up two millimeters. And I'm going to take a cross section of this entire piece. Beauty. So what I'm doing here is creating a stencil for cutting out my my uh, I guess cavities for where the the three D printer is going to go. I guess I should. Yes, I should make a square bit that comes off of here for the servo. So, here I'll show you guys. So, we have this whole section, but we don't have this servo yet. So let's make a, a couple measurements here. And that's uh, 75 millimeters. So we'll make a 75 millimeter box. by two millimeters high and the width is going to be four millimeters has anyone also a question for you guys has anyone ever made a giant robot of this size before. I'm guessing Bruce has because he has done an in-move before. And from the sounds of it, it sounds like Bruce has made the equivalent of two in-moves <laughs> uh, because he told us a story last week of his in-move falling down and breaking the majority of its PLA in an unfortunate accident. Oh ho! Do you, so do you have two full, like full in moves? Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Robo Red. Yes, the Terminator robot is definitely a large scale robot. So yeah, with larger scale robots, torque becomes a, a large factor. Oh yeah, I guess I should measure from here to here and see how far away that is. Um, that's three millimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this edge up with this using the alignment tool
There we go. And then I'm going to do a little cheaters method here and change the snap grid to one millimeter and go one, two, three with my arrow key. And that's exactly where it needs to be. All right, let's measure the body of the servo. That is 60 millimeters by an extra... Sorry that you guys can't see my calipers when I'm doing this, but you'll have to trust me on this. 42. So, 60, did I say 60? Yeah, 60 by 42. Yeah, I definitely, um, I make them actually not 100% infill. I make them close, like 95, because I've done 100% infill before, and unfortunately, because of the squish of the, of the print, when using PLA, specifically in my case, I guess, um, it forces the PLA more outward, and you get a really rough exterior uh, to your print. So I try not to go all the way up to 100%. Try to be a, like a little bit beneath it. Uh, so my print doesn't get wrecked on the outside. And it is, I have to do a lot less sanding if I need it smooth. The, an example is the Piv Gear. Piv Gear printed at 95% and it was so smooth on the outside. I didn't have to do any changes at all. Um, but the... The worm gear, that was a different story. Uh, because I printed it without any supports, and even so, if I had supports, I had to do a lot of, I had to do a lot of sanding uh, underneath on this section, because I printed it vertically. So the top was great, the top of this print was great, but underneath these ledges, it was pretty rough. Um, no, I haven't had a chance to try PETG yet, uh, Bruce. I have some at home that I got by mistake. Um, the a company that I ordered 3D filament, uh, 3D printing filament from, uh, they, they were supposed to send me all PLA, but one spool ended up PETG, so I will have a chance to use it, but um, just not at this point. All the stock that we have right now is all, all PLA here at the office. I think it was 42. Pretty sure. Yep. Okay. It just looked really big. Okay, let me center this on this piece with the alignment tool. There we go. And then I'm going to shuffle it over so they meet up. And we'll change the snap grade to 0.1. We'll zoom in, see if, no, we're not quite there yet. So shuffle it over a little more. There we go. Okay. Let's combine everything and we'll have our stencil. So it looks like there's a line right here. So I think um, I might have to shuffle both these over one more. 0.1 of a millimeter. Well, I guess maybe they're just a little higher than this one, maybe? That's that's very weird that there's a line there. Let's um, undo. We can combine these pieces. We know those are nice and uniform together. So let's just check the height of this, two, and this should be exactly two as well. Huh, weird. I don't know why it's doing that. Combine. Oh, 
All right. So, I wonder if we should just do one millimeter. I'd like it to be a little bit tough, I guess. So, we will. Uh, I think we'll keep it at two millimeters. So this will allow us to trace out uh, how, how much foam we need to cut out. Um, it also allow us to line up our holes and get our our anchors in the right place. So. Oh yeah, that's one thing I didn't check actually. If it was flat against the working surface, um, we can check that by doing this. So we just we just click on this, and move it, and go zero. All right, those are both on level on the surface here. Yep, still. I mean, Tinkercad isn't perfect, so I'm guessing it's just the, I don't know, the, the little, what do you call it? The little glitch in the system, I guess. <laughs> I just don't like it when I see lines like that because they don't always print perfectly. Just to be safe, I think I'm going to separate these pieces, move this over, just one, and combine again. Yeah, still. All right. So this is another piece that we'll have to 3D print. I think I'll get that one started so that um, it shouldn't take long, probably about half an hour to print that off. And then we can use that to do some cuts. Yeah, unfortunately, if the red was higher, it is zeroed out now, and there still is that little line there. So, yeah, I definitely put them both to zero when I when I move them, and we still have this separation. But I've had I've seen that before in the past actually with Tinkercad. I always really like really want the everything to be uniform and <laughs> not see those lines, but uh, sometimes it can't be helped. Oh, nice. Chrome 3D printed parts, sweet. So did uh, Scott um, kind of spray like spray paint them chrome or paint them chrome after they were printed out? They sound pretty awesome. All right, so I will uh, jump over to the, the other computer to get this 3D printed. So Unfortunately, I will have to leave the room for a moment, so hold tight. Oh, real chrome? Like, the, the filament is chrome? That's, that's crazy, I've never heard of that. That sounds awesome. All right, be right back, guys. Probably be two to three minutes so have a have a break I'll be right back
gun back, guys. Oh, neat. Vacuum metalized, and then chrome depositing to it, and it looks amazing. Oh, sweet. Man, I've never heard of that before. That sounds awesome. Oh, gotcha. Huh. I'm guessing that um, the paint or the, the spray is conductive, I'm guessing, in some ways. Huh. Pretty neat. I'd love to see the, the process. I got a bunch of 3D prints off hot off the bed. These ones are the 125% scale styrofoam anchors that I printed from Thingiverse. So we'll we'll use these to secure the the piece gets printed out. For now. I wonder what I should do. I will have to cut away some foam. Yeah, maybe we'll start with that. So, you see here, this part portion we, uh, we don't really need because this guy is going to kind of replace it. So DJ also had a suggestion that I don't print these these guys as large. Um, I need the the center to be this large, but the outside doesn't have to be. So I'll show you the the regular scale one. So this is. 125 and this is regular scale so we could have the diameter be regular scale but the inner the ID or the the inner portion be at 125 scale and I can use Tinkercad to to do that shouldn't be a problem so that's maybe something we should work on now because um, these may not work uh, just because we won't have enough room to, uh, to to put those into the foam and connect to them with, with the screws that we got. So maybe we'll do a little uh, the 3D design work on that. So I guess if you guys post a link in the In the chat, I have to approve it. So uh, try. I thought I approved it, but you can try again if uh, it didn't seem to show up after, unfortunately. Okay, so I think I will have to download this on this computer. I'll extract that. I guess it didn't show up after I extracted it. Oops, downloads. Let's get back to this guy. Go new design. Import the anchor at 125. And then we'll we'll import it at 100%. So go to our downloads, find that anchor. All right, and then we'll import again. This time at 100% scale. And 
they imported it right on top of each other. Whoops. So we want this this size of hole in this size of anchor. So what I'm going to do is attempt to. Oh, I'm going to get this out of the way. It's easier if this is in the center. Take this cylinder, make the sides as much as we can, and let's bring the, the dimensions way, way down. So we are at the one millimeter scale, so we're going to go to 0.1. And what I'm going to align these two, it'll make it a little easier. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I still need to go a little bigger. Probably like around 3.5. And we'll have to do the alignment again. That's fairly close. You can see it's touching the wall on this side. So if I shift it over, yeah, that is that is pretty much the size we're looking at. Okay. said yeah PLA gears breaking is not fun um, I don't know if that link is showing up for you guys but it's not showing up for me if you Bruce, maybe try one more time if uh, if you would if you wouldn't mind and I'll uh, try to prove it okay so we'll take that um, and then just line it up with this guy. Center, center. I think that'll should be fine. Oh yeah, well, I guess one thing we want to do is make that long enough that it. goes up near to the near to the top um, yeah that should be fine okay we're gonna delete that control a everything and combine okay so we just made that hole a little bigger and I'm pretty certain that this is you know what I can just do a quick analysis here and see how thick it is I'm pretty sure we still have a lot of a lot of thickness there in the wall I'm guessing that it's like around five or six millimeters oh yeah that's man that's probably like eight millimeters I'm guessing I guess I could measure that in real life as well uh, maybe a, a little less probably seven seven and a bit yeah so we have plenty of room inside of there because if I measure this again I, oh, the threads only cut in to about 4.2 millimeters so that's that's fine 
cool. So this is modified. Let's actually look inside of it for a quick second here and see where where this tube stops. Pull back a little bit. It's pretty hard to tell. Okay. Actually, that's pretty decent. Looks like it stops near this edge up here, which is where we want it to stop. Uh, if we do a quick measurement actually with the servo and the screw, so this, this edge here is going to be meeting mating with the, the foam so we'll see how much of the screw actually is ex extends past that and we'll we'll see if our uh, our anchor is deep enough so just eyeballing that to about there 23 millimeters so there I'll just do 23 millimeters with this. Yep, we're we got plenty of room in there. Perfect. So we'll call this one styrofoam anchor. Helps if I spell it right. Okay, so we'll likely print some of those as well tonight, get those going, um, but for the time being, yes, yes we are having a head made, also legs as well, so that's what will make him six, he'll actually be around six foot ten I believe, Excuse me. taller than I am, so the head is going to be big. It's also going to have LEDs in the eyes, so they, they're going to light up and do patterns like the regular JD does. I'm working on that portion as well. So, I guess we can flip over to the work desk and do some, some cutting. Alright. Let's transition over. So, let me bring the mic over a little closer. So we're going to want to likely remove this entire piece. It's unfortunate they did such a cool job contouring that. Oh yeah, sorry about the, the noise of the styrofoam. Uh, one of my coworkers <laughs> cringed very heavily when I was scratching the styrofoam. Not a very pleasant sound, I guess. Also have to get a few new blades for this guy, because this one's not that long. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, DJ is, is hiccuping somewhere else in town tonight. He's gone out to a uh, Christmas party at an old friend's place. Actually, it's funny. The, the party is at uh, old DC Robot headquarters uh, in Inglewood when we used to work there. They converted that, um, that space to a restaurant, and they serve craft nachos, and, all, and they have a bar and also poke bowls and it's a really tasty place i was pretty surprised it's really cool to go back there and just like sit in the place where i used to sit and uh you know eat lunch <laughs> and have a, a great meal of nachos and and uh yeah some drinks and just sit there and look and like just remember where we started revolution and it's pretty uh cool to just reminisce and 
and uh, look at the, how it's changed as well. The, the floor is pretty much the same, but everything else has changed. The bathrooms aren't in the same place. Um, what else? They have TVs on the walls. I guess we had a couple TVs on the walls, but they have two large ones. They changed the kitchen up quite a bit because the kitchen is now a bar. And then they moved the bathroom. I think they moved two bathrooms. And then they made, they made the entire back um, where I used to work. Uh, they made that into half of it is dining and then the other half is the kitchen in the back. And then there was a, there was a place under the stairs where... <laughs> Um, Harry Potter used to live. Well, his name was Doug, and he uh, he had his own startup under the stairs, and he uh, rented that space, and that has since turned into a cooler for the <laughs> restaurant. So, pretty funny. Anyways, let me uh, switch out the blade here. Make it easier for us to cut the styrofoam. All right, there we are. Now, I think we're just gonna remove this piece here. Doesn't need to be there. And likely all oh, that piece there too. Because looking at it, if the servo sits like this, yeah, it's even going to have to be sunken into this foam right here as well. What I might do is find the center of the center center of this point so I can kind of get it lined up with this. I don't know if it's going to be perfect unless. Yeah, unless I put the servo like, no. Uh, trying to see like, no, the servo's gonna hang off that way, that's not gonna work. So it's likely going to have to be like that. And then this edge here will line up. Maybe we have to bring that in a little bit actually. Yeah. So it'll be kind of like that, what's sunken in. Yeah, that's exactly how it's going to have to go. And yeah, we'll try to get this piv gear centered as much as we can. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. I think that it's going to be off center a little bit uh, because we still need some meat of the styrofoam to, to put the the anchors into. Yeah, if we like, it's going to be really close to the side. If we shift this this over any further, I'm trying to think if I can make that thinner. I don't think I can. I think it's all supported in. Yeah, there's supports here that I can't make any thinner. Sorry, I guess you can't see that. Supports in here that I can't make any thinner. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. That's going to be a bit of a challenge, I think. Luckily, when we put um, the mounting plate on this side, 3D printed plate that goes here, we can actually shift it over. And this may look like it's still centered perfectly, um, but the actual plate that uh, interfaces with it will be shifted a little bit. That'll be fine. So the idea is to almost be able to use the regular JD project uh, with this guy and be able to you know change the eyes just like you would on a regular JD 
and move the servos as well. Uh, these servos will move a little slower than, excuse me, than JD's uh, regular servos because we have a worm gear reduction gear in there. So it's a lot torquier, but trade-off is a little, it's a little bit slower. So I'm not sure how I want to do this. When I start cutting the styrofoam, it's probably going to kill you guys' ears. It's not going to be sounding very well. Um, so maybe I will, maybe I'll just do it over there on top of JD's body back there. Um, make things uh, a little less loud for you guys at the microphone. But I guess in turn I will have to yell from the back of the room. All right, so let's go back. Let's switch their views here and let's go back there. Scratching styrofoam to market, not so successful because styrofoam already has a bunch of little holes in it. So let's use a marker. Actually, let's use a fine tip marker. Uh, one of these thicker ones might not work that, that precisely. Sorry guys, I won't be able to see the chat for a little bit here, but keep on chatting if you want. raised part is that's why I'm lancing it off of here we're gonna try to get the pivot gear as centered as possible it won't be centered but we're gonna try our best Okay. Let's do 
more cutting. but has has like a, a round or a square spring that goes on the outside of it and it's not really like your classic spring it's just like a two pieces of metal that come down and then you bend it onto the latching bolt and I was thinking about doing that because you will likely have to remove uh, I guess I'll use that at the shoulder down here I'll probably use maybe regular bolts because uh, they will likely have to take the arms off of the shoulder to be able to uh, transport this guy. Because there's no way you can transport this whole thing uh, in one case, I guess. Six foot tall robot and it's pretty large. So I'm going to cut off this other raised portion. Before I do that, let's make a center and hole again. Oh yeah, it's like perfectly eight. with you guys and grab a drink at the same time. Gotcha. I'm glad you know the, the terms there, Bruce. Because <laughs> I sure don't. I haven't really used a, a latch bolt before. I'm trying to think if there has been. Oh, I guess, actually... I lied. I have used one before on a skateboard rail that I had. It had a quick release for the uh, the two bottom stabilizers. You could take them off and raise the rail up or raise it down using those latch pins. Alright, so let's do some more cutting. I actually 
actually, I'll, I'll have a quick look to see where we're at with, um, with the 3D print. I'm hoping it's about halfway. So we're about 45% done of that print, and it's been half an hour. Man, I way underestimated the time it would take for that piece by half. <laughs> I said it would take half an hour, it's going to take one hour and a bit. Okay, so cutting this. So when cutting styrofoam, you want to make sure you have a lot of blades handy because styrofoam dulls the blades very easily. I know this because I was helping a cosplay legend, a lady named Angela Dale that lives close to Calgary. She's done uh, if you guys are familiar with Stargate, which I'm sure some of you guys are, she did majority of the costumes on Stargate. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure she did quite a few of them. Um, that's where she got her movie industry start, I guess. And she's done costumes for a lot of shows here in Calgary. And I think a few more movie productions and stuff. But yeah, she she had mentioned that that uh, you need a lot of replacement blades when you're cutting with styrofoam, and you want your blades sharp to be able to cut through it. All right, looks like we're through. Do a nice, as nice a job this time as I did last time. Oh well. We still have our our hole that can be seen there, and on the other side over here, that's our cut. So we'll have to wait half an hour for the stencil to be done, or we just start just start cutting. Trace the existing servo, make sure it's almost lined up with the center of that, and we start doing some cuts. I think we should do that. We'll also have to make some cuts on the JD body. I forgot about that. The JD body will we'll need to take the the little guy that I have here. Well, I mean, by little guy, I mean like the regular JD. We'll take him and we'll see where the servos are positioned on him. They are pretty, pretty forward on the body, so we'll have to make a note of that. They're not centered on the body. And so that, you know, we can be as to scale as possible, so. We do want to kind of line up the servos in this position. So they're more of like the top left corner, if you're looking at the left hand side of JD, top left corner is more where the servo's at. I think I might bring it back a, a tiny bit, just to be more in line with the, with the legs. But that's kind of the gist of where we want to be. Oh yes, 
So there's the tricky part that is going to happen. So if we don't center this on here, and we put another servo on the other side, you know what's going to happen, right? One servo is going to be like this, the other servo is going to be like this. They're going to be off. So we do have to bring this into the center as much as possible. So what I'm going to do is mark on here with my green marker where we need to be. challenge to see where whether or not we might have to shrink this design because even this looks a little bit big with the anchor I don't know if it's going to be able to cut in enough into the so let's make some dots here where we think these are going to mount. We'll see if this you know what, that might be just bang on touching the touching the side. So that's where it's going to be. Sorry, we'll try to get into the... There we go. So, it is very, very close to that edge. I'm a little bit scared that, that this will pop off out of the edge. We may have to shrink this, the outer piece of this design. Something I really don't want to do because we want to have as much width, I guess you will, is to grab onto the, the styrofoam as possible. We can, uh, I guess I should start some 3D prints of this piece with the proper, uh, the proper width on the inside, and we can do some testing. So I'll go do that now, and I'll uh, 3D print some more of these guys. I'll probably put a bunch on one printer, I'll print out four or eight, so we can do this side as well. And um, yeah, I'll come, I'll come right back. So you guys uh, have a bit of free time again. So I'll be right back in about three minutes, I'm guessing. I don't know if we'll need these anymore, but we'll just set those to the side.
writing about me. So, we might make JD walk, but that's going to be phase two. Uh, phase one, the legs will be stationary, and I think there'll be some rods maybe put through them. But um, after the first couple, if things are going well, we could look at possibly making JD walk. This six foot tall JD, I should say. And. Yeah, it could be quite the challenge. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. We'll see how the arms uh, fare with this this design. I think uh, Bruce might be right about uh, needing a plate that attaches to the foam. Because, yeah, this is looking like it's... The anchors would be way too close to the sides and not provide uh, the grip we're looking for. So the plate, if we made a plate... So I'm printing off these anchors just to do a test with them because it would be sad to go this far and not actually test them. So the next step after we test them would be to yes, possibly make a plate that the servo attaches to and then the plate is would be glued or JB welded or something onto uh, onto the styrofoam piece. Yeah, it would likely walk like like the, the real JD. Uh, so we don't have to change the JD project. Um, we probably have to slow the the actions down or the frames between the uh, the frames between each other on the actions. So we could, yeah, I could possibly use the anchors for the plate if I made the, a way to kind of connect the anchors on the plate. Like a, it's like a smaller hole that this can go through and then lock on. Or a similar system. Or like make a little collar. I zoom in here if you guys can see that. Uh, make, instead of having this curved piece come all the way down to here, we could have it stop and around here and then make some sort of space where this can maybe this would have to be a little bit bigger but have a space where this can like snap on to the plate and it spins on the plate we'll see we'll see what the next design is but first we gotta try these anchors and see if that works But uh, either way, we're going to make it happen, one way or another. <laughs> I'll be working more on it this weekend and likely all next week uh, to make it happen. So, And then once that we have the design finalized, then we will give the dimensions to uh, the designer, the foam designer, and the foam designer will cut it out, and then they will also put the coating on and the paint after that. So, uh, from what they tell us, uh, the the coating and the paint will actually be super rigid, rigid enough that it can go outside and also be manhandled and travel and that kind of thing. So, it's going to be a pretty solid coating on there. Yeah, I was thinking the same. Bolts would likely be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I'm DJ uh, thinks about four or five steps ahead of everything, <laughs> and I'm always at like like one step, <laughs> one step ahead. Um, DJ is definitely more of a visionary than I am, and, and can picture mechanical things and electrical things working together, uh, like in almost. Com in completion because his mind works that way me I'm a little slower I need to have it in hand to visualize it more um, yeah and I, and I always I'm always thinking like yeah only one step ahead <laughs> so yeah sometimes I should be thinking more steps ahead so that I don't make as many mistakes but yeah <laughs> five years behind <laughs> 
No way. You're doing you're doing great, Nomad. I like uh, I love the the additions that you make on your robots and the, the customization. It's pretty awesome. It's unique too. So right now, I guess I'm kind of waiting for 3D prints to be done. I guess I could start figuring out where to put the servo on the the body. Kind of figuring out maybe the ratio of where I need it. Oh wow, Bruce seems like he uh, he's always uh, probably extend ten steps ahead. <laughs> Smart guy. It's built four built home built aircrafts and has his, had his pilot's license since he was eighteen. Dang, that's that's hardcore. That's pretty awesome. Actually, my dad is a, was a pilot. Um, he uh, and he also built a home-built aircraft. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the RV6A. I think it was. Uh, here, maybe I'll bring it up on screen. But my it, it was a a kit plane. I think it's a Dash 6A. Yes, this is this is it. So my dad was um, ambitious enough, let's say, to <laughs> build his own airplane. And it sounds like <laughs> Bruce, I don't know if you've built, is it, are you talking like full scale, like, like this kind of Cessna sort of style plane? I'm guessing you are. With that, uh, yeah, that was pretty crazy. Anyways, these, these planes came in uh, kind of pre-cut kits, and then you kind of rivet the thing together. Um, a lot of the sheet metal you had to, I think, believe you had, you had to cut to size yourself. Uh, I don't think you needed to do much of the bending, though, like the, the harder stuff. The sheet metal up here and stuff, I think you had to bend, but not like the corners of that, I don't think. I'm not too sure what all those are. A gyroplane, that sounds pretty cool though. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I was just laughing at uh, Triple E Mister's comment. That's, uh, yeah, that's pretty scary to, <laughs> to look at helicopter videos. I think that would probably deter anyone from getting their helicopter's license. The key is to just jump into it and not even watch those kind of <laughs> videos. But yeah, uh, my dad actually didn't finish it. Funny enough, it's one of the projects that that uh, one of the few projects that he didn't finish in his life. He ended up getting like pretty close, probably like ninety percent of the way done, and then ended up ended up selling it. He. Uh, he decided to move on to another dream, and that was to to quit his job as a heavy duty mechanic and go to school and become an instrumentation technologist. And funny enough, he went to the same school I did, and went in the, his classes were um, a hallway like beneath the hallway that I did my classes in. <laughs> Funny enough, our our uh, our two disciplines were closely related. So, oh wow, <laughs> had to land on a highway. That's insane. <laughs> Actually, that reminds me of a story that in in Calgary here. Uh, I think it was two years ago. You might be able to pull it up on the Google if you find it. Um, a pilot had to land on a roadway in Calgary. Um, I think it was early in the morning, so it wasn't too bad, but they, I don't know, and I don't remember if there's footage or not, but they landed on a street, 36th Street, and yeah, it was, so you're not the only one <laughs> there, Bruce, and I'm glad you survived that. That's, that's crazy. Uh, maybe I'll look it up for a second. Calgary, 
36th Street plane landing. There we go. Here it is. They actually they do have footage. I'm guessing not of the actual plane landing, but probably taxiing along the highway. All right, here, I'll uh, switch the view here so you guys can see it a little better. Oh, man, these ads. Man, ads are getting worse than TV used to be. I remember being miffed about the commercials that were all on, on TV. Now, and then we, on the Internet, there was none. But now we get... 30 seconds of commercials. Yeah, I don't have my speakers on, but as you can see, there's a twin prop plane <laughs> in the middle of a Calgary street. And this is our light rail transit system. It's, yeah, I think they, he like clipped some of the, the rails and look, there's power lines here and everything. It's insane that someone would be able to land a plane on there on that street uh, the airport isn't too far away actually from this location 30 strict 36th street goes up north and it almost hits the the airport but i guess they couldn't make it they were, i think they maybe ran out of fuel or something and had to make an emergency landing but pretty crazy hey <laughs> that was two or three years ago let's see here uh, two years. Oh, wait. Man, that's, that's a year and a half ago, pretty much. <laughs> wow, that's sooner than, I, sooner than I thought. Anyway, figured I'd share that with you guys. We should uh, continue on the hack a little bit. Let's uh, switch our views here to this one. All right. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. The plane is hanging in a restaurant. Interesting. Do you have any any pictures of that? That sounds awesome. <laughs> wow. can't believe it lost the left wing. That's crazy. Bruce, you're a daredevil. All right. So, back to the hack. Let's uh, let's see where we're at. I think we're gonna look at the JD body and measure out where we think the servo should go. use the calculator on my phone. So 5.3 
5.3 times 6, 31.8. So let's go 33 divided by 5.3, 6.22 scale. Okay, if I don't remember that, you remember that. 6.22 scale. very intriguing about working on a robot at this scale because uh, I had never had before so it seems yeah it seems like it's gonna be a challenge but also a lot of fun to see it come together uh, I might live hack it next next Friday as well we'll see it depends where everything is at where the uh, final product is at but uh, this, the prototyping will likely be way past done, and then we'll be on to the, the final thing. So I may have a six foot tall JD standing here beside me next week. We'll see. <laughs> okay, so we want to measure how far down this goes. So that's actually the same dimension, it's 1.5, so just gotta go down the same dimension. center of our servo to be. So on the other side, it will be mounted like this. So these will be kind of opposite of each other. Actually, they will actually mount the same way, I forgot, because um, both of these pieces can be mirrored and printed to be a left or a right. So that's, you guys can see that. I hope so. Actually, if we move this, you know what? All we need to do is bend this thing down and we'll be able to see much better. going to go right there. Um, yeah, this one is like way far away from the side already, so we might be able to use anchors with this one. But if we do come up with a system um, that we like, I guess, uh, we could just use the same system for these shoulder servos. 
So that's where it should be. I'm thinking about moving it a little bit back. Probably not down more because it'll throw off the scale of the JD. But so the servo. See if I can do this with my hand. There we go. We'll be outward like that, so you can kind of see the scale of his arm. And then at rest, we'll be like like that, but a little further down. Actually, it'll be like this, I can say. certain movements and also to I think to be able to balance JD I think that the arms being more forward it brought more of the weight forward the one thing is that if I don't do it to scale it might throw off some of the actions with the normal JD project so I may have to resort to actually putting it to in the proper place and the, the scale dimension. I think if we're close it'll be fine, but yeah, I probably don't want to mess with it too much. So we will have to cut out. Um, oh, I know what I should have done in the well, I guess I can still do it on the that that. Uh, why can't I remember the name of that thing? Um, the stencil, yes, stencil. I should have put a center point for for this guy on the stencil, so that way I can line it up perfectly with our with our measurements here. So I'll probably do that. Once it comes off the printer, I'll probably drill a hole, find the center where it needs to be, drill a hole in there. And then uh, it'll be easy to line things up. And then we'll use the stencil to cut our a basic shape in the side of this so that we can sink this guy into the body. And have just the pit gear sticking out of there. Okay, so I'm going to go check, see where our 3D print is at. And uh, I'm not too sure what we'll move on to next. We've got our 3D printed designs modified. We have done some cuts on the servo, on the faux servo, I guess you call it. The giant servo. So... We're really just waiting for that stencil. I guess we could do more cuts on that servo without the stencil. I can just use the servo itself as a guide. We can do that. Yeah, I think that'll be our next step. We'll do that. Um, yeah, one thing I haven't really thought about is left versus right on these servos. So I can print the orientation a little bit different on each of these. So instead of it, everything being on this side and lined up on this side, I could print it to be flipped all the way around and be lined up on this side. But I don't know if it, I don't think it matters. I think for for weight, Maybe it'll be nice to have the servos kind of 
on, on diametrically opposite sides, like there. So printing them out the exact same way, there on this side, and we'll be on there on this side, there on this side. So it could balance the weight out a little better, or I could print a left and right version, and that. That would make it easy with the stencil because it would use the same stencil. Or I guess I could flip the stencil over. Sorry guys, just thinking out loud. I'm brainstorming in my head. Well, that was kind of a, an opposite thing to say, but you know what I mean. It's getting late. It's 10 o'clock, I think, right? No, not even. It's not really late, but it's getting late in my mind. <laughs> Remember, when I do these live hacks, I've done a full day of work, and then I do the live hack. <laughs> so my brain's not firing on all cylinders. But I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. Okay, let's go. I'll go check the 3D printers. I wish I could take you guys along with me, but I don't have a wireless camera. So, be right back. Great news guys, we're at 94% printed on our stencil, so we are getting close. Alright, let's just move down to this, this workbench on the side here, let's switch the view, and we'll do some tracing on, on this uh, styrofoam servo. Dang, these things are sharp, i got to be careful. <laughs> Good call. Time for another beer. Alright, we'll transition to this view here. And I'll stop yelling. I'll just use the microphone. Okay, uh, as I was saying, like we got to be careful with these anchor bits. Because uh, if you leave them on your desk and you put your hand near them, they could stab you pretty good. Which just happened to me, unfortunately. Alright, so we're going to line things up over here, try to center it, and then we'll do, we'll trace it. I also want to make sure this is kind of square, squared up. I wish I had a, an actual square. Those are handy. What I will do, use a ruler and try to eyeball it. Adjusting the mic here, sorry about that. Okay, we'll see if the servo is. You know what? Let's use a level. This is the perfect time to use one. Let's do it. Let's be on the level. So, first, let me make sure everything is lined up. Uh, let's extend the that line to the edge so we can see where it's at. We'll probably work on Astro Boy during the Christmas break. Not too sure how much time I'll have to do it, but I'd like to progress it a little more. OK. 
Okay, so let's just do a quick measurement here. 4.7 divided by 2 is 2.35, yeah. Okay, so we line those two up and then we'll use the level. Yep, that's lined up. Let's make them kind of a mark here. So what I want to do is turn this 90 degrees and use the level to Make sure everything is straight. Sorry. Oh, I hear a printer. That printer is done. Okay, so I'm going to force this against the wall. Stabilize it. Make sure that's lined up. And then tilt. go. Okay, so let's make our outline now. side unfortunately. Okay. I think we have it all markered out. I think I could have just used the stencil that just finished printing. <laughs> that probably would have been wise. should be cut out and put in. Now I don't think I'll do all these little cuts here to make it perfect, but that's the general shape. And then we have to figure out how deep we have to go. So I think what we are thinking is it'd be as deep as the servo. So, I guess I can just measure that. It's about, it's almost bang on three centimeters. So we'll go three centimeters down all the way across here. Got to be careful, guys. I messed up the dimensions a little bit on this cut, so three centimeters at one place may not be three centimeters at another place. Yeah, my bad. 
put it at three and a half instead of three. Okay, there we go. Let's draw a line across here. straight line, not a jagged, weird line. Okay, there we go. So that's the depth that we're going to cut down to. It should match the servo pretty bang on. Yeah, we are good. Okay, so let's uh, go grab that 3D print and my let's, I just mean, I will go grab that 3D print and I'll be right back. I think that's the, probably like the first time we've ever 3D printed something that we designed on a live hack. And, um, and like, you know, designed it, 3D printed it, and had it all done in one hack. So there it is. Now, looking at it though, I think I messed up. I should have made a little hole instead of this massive big hole on this guy so we could line the center point up very nicely but oh well here we are so lining this all up it looks pretty good I guess what I can do is maybe make some markings on here and here here and here, and line them up the lines that meet in the center point. Oh yes, um, so the servos, um, this guy, I believe, well it's hard to say because we, I think we got a discount for, because they're Easy Robots manufacturer, I believe they were $30 a piece. Um, but if you buy them full retail price, I believe they could go up to $70. So um, somewhere between there, I guess, is the real price, I'm guessing. I'm guessing they're like a $50 servo if you want to buy them yourself. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Six-foot Astro as well. We'll see. We'll, we need to make him in the boy size first, the, the small boy size, like baby size. And then we'll uh, we'll think about bringing him up to the adult size, cause it's Astro Boy, is it not? Not Astro Man. So let's keep him uh, boy sized. All right, I'm trying to think of how I might make those markings that I was talking about on on here. Hmm. <laughs> I think I'm going to need my knife and a marker. And I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. But if you can't, I'm going to raise this up a little bit. just don't want to be too far from the microphone. 
Yeah, it's a pretty decent price for that torquey of a servo. I'm glad it's not like a hundred dollar range. You know, that's, I think my my brain is not working right right now, but I'm having a hard time thinking about how I should find where to put those markings. I guess if I match it up with this guy. There we go. Um, and this has holes in the center portions here, here, and here. If I turned this to where I needed it, I could make the markings I needed, I guess. So... One way we can do that is by using an easy B, an easy builder, and turning turning the piv gear. So let's do that. Easy B here. Powered up. It's gonna say my battery is low probably because I have it at a lower voltage. Yeah, that's what I thought. So Let's get Easy Builder rocking first and then we'll hook up. Oh wow, yeah that's quite a bit of money. And I don't think that servo was like... Oh, I'm just, I'm talking to Nomad right now. I don't think that servo that you had is like super high torque either, right? It's just that it was uh, a low profile. That's the kind of the, the special por part of that servo. Okay, so let me switch our views here. We'll get Easy Builder rocking. Man, DJ put out another one, another Easy Builder today. Who knew? He's been pumping out the revisions lately. All right, here we go. We'll transition to here. Full screen that. And let me get the chat back up. Yeah, I guess specialty servos. Yeah, they may not. May not be so torquey, but they have a unique form factor, I guess, and that's what makes them a little pricier. Yeah, comparatively, like a high torque servo isn't that much more than those. I don't know what the exchange rate from sur uh, from euros to U.S. or Canadian dollars is right now, but I'm guessing that is like 60 or 70 U.S. dollars. I think because euros are worth more, right? Correct me on that if I'm wrong. <laughs> nice. We did make it through Friday the 13th. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to plug this Easy B in. Wait, no. I'm going to do something first. We got to adjust the battery settings. So the reason why I'm only at like 5.1 volts is that these servos are actually the low voltage ver version which is uh, max 6 volts and starts at 4.8 volts so we'll enable the override and then disable the battery monitor save that yes we will just ignore that 
plug in and we'll connect as fast as we can and try not to hear that warning message. Alright, it's connecting. Give it one second. We're good. Okay, no more low battery message. We'll add a servo, horizontal servo. D0. Save that. Okay, there we go. So now we can we can move this servo. We'll just hit center, see where it's at. Alright, you can see it move. So, if we go back a little bit, we can get it to be lined up with this guy. And I'll also put that in there for the time being. So it doesn't move around. Okay, so let's adjust that. Seems like 106 is pretty straight up and down. Oh, you know what? I lined that up with the marking that I've made, not the actual holes. So let's go to 108. Looks like it needs to go a little more. Oh, whoops, 110. Let's go to 112. So you guys can't really see that um, from your angle, but if I drop a small screwdriver through there, nope. <laughs> um, do I have something else that may fit? Well, I do have a paper clip that will kind of fit. So we bend the paper clip out so it's like more straight up and down you guys will kind of see where we're at if this is straight up and down or not it helps if what we're using is straight so maybe I'll grab a actually a smaller screwdriver and uh, it should allow us to see a little better Stop fooling around. Make sure this is all lined up. Kind of, I'm just gonna eyeball it. It seems to be off a little bit. I need, think I need to go further to 114. Yeah, that's much better. 114 it is, and then let's make some markings on here. I'll just use a marker, and then I'll just use the knife afterwards when I pull this thing off. Oh, this this guy? This is called a level in English. I didn't hear no banging noises, don't freak me out. I'm here by myself, guys.
The door is locked. Jason ain't getting in. Did you guys see the U or the the old YouTube video that um, that had uh, Justin's Jason mask on a JD? At least I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was Justin that made it, that designed it. Uh, Justin Ratliff. Uh, DJ threw it up on Facebook actually today because he's like, "Oh, it's Friday the 13th. Got to th throw on the video, the old video of JD with the with the knife and the mask." Okay, so we got we got our marking set up here. You know what? We could use the level actually. I never even thought about that. Let's do it. Okay, we don't need you anymore. Don't need you, Easy Builder. Let's turn that off. Let's uh, transition to this. Water pass. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing at what Bruce wrote, wrote in the chat. Okay. Yeah, so there's a saying that's that people say sometimes that you're straight on the level or on the level. And that's, this is what the tool that they're talking about when they say that. So I'm going to check to see if I'm on the level with my, my markings that I put on here with the, with the markers. Okay. It looks like I am not on the level, but it may be because I'm resting on other items that are cluttering up my desk. Okay. Try this one more time. And we are on the level. It looks good. And we can double check. This guy. Well, we can actually just put it on the surface and that will be level and then check our markings which are very difficult to see yeah so we're good let us etch those in you know what maybe I should just use the, the Dremel easier than putting knife patterns in this uh, oh well I'm here I'm doing it okay the whole reason we're doing this is so that we can line up and make sure that our servo is on the level shall we say it's kind of turned in the right position so it looks like the markings that I made on this were uh, are a little bit off whatever the, uh, the straight line here across the horizontal plane looks good uh, the vertical one is definitely off Okay, so that will be our guide to see if we're lined up center center. It looks like this edge is coming off a little bit. Well, that's the way it has to be. So, what I can do here is actually. 
think we need to do some cutting before I actually make any holes for the the anchors because I can't make the holes for the anchors yet uh, because we still need to cut away three centimeters off of this whole thing. And you know what I didn't realize is that it may have to be a little bit more than three centimeters because the bottom of the servo isn't the bottom. These pads are the bottom. So we will have to measure from the bottom of the servo a little further down. And we also need a little tiny bit of clearance for this for this um, worm gear section here. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm pointing at. I didn't realize that the camera is not in the perfect position. Okay, you can probably see that. Good. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you can uh, you can call me the desk level. That's me. All right. So what we'll do is we will cut out enough foam to mount this one servo. Kind of get the dimensions right. We'll use the stencil to cut out others, but I think we'll do that at another time because well. Really, I still have to get this work done. I really hadn't really thought about that. So, you guys might as well stay stick around with me if you want. But it, this will like this will go past 10:30 for sure. So I might leave the stream going. You're welcome to stay or go if you'd like. But uh, it looks like we have a few new people watching. I didn't realize we're up to about six now. So if you're just joining us, I am cutting away the styrofoam on this servo, fake servo, it's foam. This is the servo bracket that goes on it. And it is a replica of the Easy Robot lever servo on this guy. So this foam represents the body of the servo and then obviously the bracket, this bracket represents this bracket here. And we are mounting this hardcore heavy duty heavy duty servo onto the side of the foam. So we're making that fit. We're figuring it out and making it happen. And just so you kind of know the scale of what we're working at, um, let me go back here and show you. So on the, the little camera on the upper left, upper right, I guess, you'll see me holding this body which is massive. <laughs> so this will give you a, a good uh, perception of the scale of what we're working at right, right now with making this six foot tall JD, which is going to be actually almost seven feet tall by the time everything is said and done. All right, so it's time to do some foam cutting, a little bit of measuring, which I can do actually from the table surface. I have a ruler here that actually has zero centimeters right at the bottom, so that works. And we'll see how much further we have to go. So we have to go three millimeters further down from this line here. So let's do some quick measuring. Sorry about the, all the foam noise. All right, so we're gonna drop that down by three millimeters. A couple 
measurements here, a couple measurements over here, and we'll draw a line. We'll X this out because we don't want that one. Yeah, I'm sure that doesn't sound so appealing, all the rustling of the styrofoam. Okay, so we'll draw our line. Alright, so that's how deep we have to go. So that the servo just meets the top of this surface here. So I still haven't figured out exactly how I want to cut out uh, the servo. I might do a diagonal cut from here to here. It is going to be tricky to get the knife from this side all the way down. So we can only go to about there with the knife. Hmm. So what I might have to do is cut to here and open this up from the other side. From this point right here, go down, cut like that. and do the same from here down. So at least still the servo will be locked in at this point and we'll do our best but maybe we'll, we'll try to get it locked in at this point as well so it doesn't shift too much. And then after that's all cut out we'll have to make our our holes with these guys here and that's where our anchors are going to go and this anchor design may not work so we will just be testing that to see if it does and if you don't know what I'm talking about when I talk about the anchor design here you go this is what we're going to be drilling into the styrofoam and then we're going to be mounting a wood screw into the hole in the bottom there And I do have those uh, anchors printing right now, so hopefully they're done by the time we are ready. So let's measure how far down we went on this side. That looks like should be around 3.3. That is indeed correct. So we'll have to put a marking of 3.3 on this side. I can't forget that I made a dip right in this section here, so I can't measure from there. I measure from over here. All right, so let's see if that'll bridge the gap. That'll do. Okay, let's do a line from there to around there and that's our depth okay so just to clarify this again we're going to cut, if you can't, yes, I'm going to have to move myself a little bit here so you guys can see where I'm going to make these cuts. Make one down from here, all the way down across, go up here, try to leave as much as we can so that 
this nub at the top of the servo gets locked in place. So we'll try to leave that. And then we'll start cutting the other side. And we will likely make a diagonal cut across here. Well, actually, thinking of that, I forgot that we'll likely just make a cut straight across here. I forgot about that. So then we'll make a cut across there and then up to here. All right, let's do these cuts. And I hope that um, it's not too loud on the on the microphone. my metal ruler to make this cut will make it easier switch out the blades in because it's probably getting pretty dull already. speaking. Sorry, not so talkative at the moment. I am concentrating. Don't want to cut off any fingers, so you know, best not to do that. I should probably lock my blade. Okay, so one cut left. Actually, I think I already made that cut. I did. So, this is likely held in place right around this section here because I couldn't cut under it. 
Um, but let's see if we can maybe break it free. I'll also try cut this a little deeper, deep as possible. Make sure there's nothing in the middle. I'm pretty sure that can go past. Maybe it can't go past the middle. So cut that all as deep as possible. Okay, and let's just try to rock and roll that off of there. We could actually slice pieces off, which is not a bad idea. had a slope on this side by accident and it cut straight up and down. So we'll cut in a little bit with this knife. that they cut all this foam in. I'm guessing they don't use knives that often, but yeah, cutting with a knife definitely makes a mess if you're rough cutting like I am. Okay, let's the moment of truth. Let's see if our servo fits in there. Snug, perfect. Wait, look at that. It's a thing of beauty, it worked out nicely. It seems like it's leaning a little bit towards the center. supposed to go 
in here. So you can see that it is cutting it way too close. That is going to pop off the side of here and I don't think it's going to be held in place very strongly. But we can always try it. It doesn't hurt to try. In order for us to get the anchor in this point and possibly in this point here, we will have to remove some material off the, the sides so it won't fit perfectly as snug anymore. Well, actually, we can just cut off a little bit in this section. It should still be snug. But uh, let's have a look at that again. is not as centered as it actually is, but it is. Okay, one side cut out. Def definitely adds a little bit of weight to this thing, that's for sure. It's not as light as it was before. You can feel it kind of wanting to tip. But uh, once we have the other one on the other side, should be golden. So we will also have to print out another one of these so we can do our do a complete test with two of them. But uh, like I said, and what uh, Bruce had pointed out, and Alley Cat had pointed out, that that system that I'm thinking about mounting with uh, may not work, just because we just don't have enough material on the side here to mount to. So we may have to resort to making something like this that I already made. And I know what I could do is put like those T nuts that I was showing you guys. Uh, that are for uh, for wood usually. I could put a T nut on this side that has a backing on it. Maybe I could cut off the what do you call those? The little claws that are on them, or bang them flat or something. And well, I guess they would have to like kind of catch in here, and then put this plate in place and glue it, um, I'm guessing with some epoxy or something, or have, actually this plate could be painted in place if you will, we could glue it and then have them put their protective coating over top of it and have it locked in, into place, uh, sealed into place so that it doesn't uh, pop out and then um, this guy would thread into those t-nuts and it could be easily removed and put back in or we could do like a like a t-nut system incorporated onto this plate uh, with some seats built onto all these sections here. A 3D printed seat. Which, you know what, I don't tell the truth, I don't I don't like that. Oh, sorry, you probably couldn't hear me that well. I don't know if I really like um, threading into 3D printed plastic all that much because there's always the the risk that you could actually crack it and then your mounting bracket is not as solid, so it would be nice to have something metal. Excuse me. 
a metal seat there to uh, to thread thread a bolt into. But I will have to wait until tomorrow and to find some of those tea nuts to test with because the stores are closed at the moment at the moment. Trying to think if there's any other way. This is kind of nice though that it's uh, two millimeters thick and it gives actually the, the servo worm gear, which would be probably rubbing against the styrofoam. It actually gives it a little bit of a spacer so it wouldn't, wouldn't be rubbing against anything. The T-nuts could stick out a little bit, which is cool. They could stick out almost all the way up. I think that's probably another... Oh yeah, did I say two centimeters? This is only two millimeters. My bad. It's getting late. Uh, this is about 1.4 millimeters away, so we can have a pretty high, I guess, T-nut seat if we wanted to. All right, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat here. Oh, yeah, good call. I guess I could use a, a hacksaw blade. Probably nice and thin. Works well with that. <laughs> yeah, oh man. I do not... I would not ha like that that kind of business to, to have foam cutting every day and having it all in my hair and stuff. But you do what you gotta do, right? Yeah. I'm... Very uh, grateful that this is only only for one project with all this foam cutting. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know if I could deal with having all those white bits everywhere all the time. But for now, it's fine. So what we're going to want to do is cut out this same sort of cavity on this side. And print out the same servo pattern man it's getting late I <laughs> what I mean is we're gonna use this to cut out the same servo pattern on this side once it's all lined up in the center with our little I guess you can't see what I see but with our stencil here we'll find out where the center is line things up cut that out and then we'll need to print out a whole another one of these guys so that we can mount it on here and do some testing so I will have to like let some stuff print overnight because uh, there's no way I can I think I do have another one of these printing right now but yeah it's still printing it's gonna be another probably three hours until that's done so I will want to print out a few of these overnight so I can do some testing tomorrow. And yeah, our stencil is definitely going to come in handy to help us do some more foam cutting. But I think that's what I'm going to recommend. So we're going to use what Bruce had mentioned, a plate. We'll put some T-nuts that have threads in them. We'll try that. Uh, behind here and then this will we'll have to actually cut down a, a tiny bit further because of the two centimeters that we are adding with this plate Ugh. try to get these wires out of the way so it'll fit all like that I had mentioned before we'll try to have the servo from here uh, on this side over here to kind of balance out the weight otherwise it'll be really heavy on it might make it twist 
I'll think about it some more. I'm at the point where I'm like, you know what? I got enough done to get me by until the next day. Now I don't want to start. I don't want to think anymore. <laughs> I think I'm done thinking for the night. I guess it would have been nice to keep a little bit more material here. It's just harder to to cut that little section there. But yeah, I think, you know what? I think I might uh, stop the stream because I'm getting to the point where I can't talk and work at the same time. I think I could just work or just talk, not both. So we've gotten to the end of this live stream. Wow, we have seven people watching right now. Thanks, thanks for joining us, guys. I'm glad you got to see some of the, the fit and the, the foam cutting. Uh, I think we'll go over... I just want to show you the, the body one last time so you guys can see the scale because it's ridiculous. <laughs> Transition to a different view here. For that last person that's just joined us, we'll show you this. But we'll, we'll end on this as well, so... We end on a ridiculous note. <laughs> so you see that that servo there on the ground and the body behind it. Those are representing this body here and these servos here. And let's go put JD beside those pieces so you can see the scale of them. There you go. So this is one scale and this is 6.22 scale and this is how it fits on my body which is quite ridiculous <laughs> so huge this is how thick it is and this is how tall it is i guess so jd is going to be this foam jd is going to be the next six foot ten inches i believe if I remember correctly. And uh, as I mentioned to these guys earlier, the foam is going to look very, very similar to JD. It's, it actually looks really good. I had a, a look at a couple of pictures of the, the more polished finished stuff. The stuff that I have here is more prototyping stuff. Um, I will have to try the Pet G in the future I won't be able to likely won't be able to use it now because we have so much PLA I need to use up um, we'll see how it goes if I run into trouble we'll I'll go to uh, pet G but uh, yeah it is this stuff is this is a pretty crazy scale that we're working at Thanks guys for making the chat so lively. <laughs> it's pretty awesome to interact with you guys. I, I think this is going to be it for me. Uh, I guess signing off. Until next time, me and Astro. Same. Have a great weekend. And we will see you in the next live hack. And it's going to be probably completely different next week. And hopefully we'll have maybe the full-scale robot here it'll, you'll be able to see how ridiculously huge it is and we will we'll have some fun with it alright guys thanks again and have a great weekend see you later <laughs>